Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, we already uh, gather again in virtual webinar. Yeah? Webinar on Saturday, 31st October 2020. Yeah? And then um, Thank you for University of Macau. There are Professor Joseph and Professor Glenn who already come here. Okay, and then uh, Miss Kiran, Miss Vanessa, and Miss Mizuki, and then also uh, Ivan. Yeah. Okay. Now we want to hear about the presentation of University of Macau. How to uh, get the admission offer and then how to get the scholarship in University of Macau. Thank you so much for University of Macau. And if you have any question about University of Macau, you can ask to uh, in YouTube chat column. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for this uh, this webinar. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Joseph and Professor Glenn and all our uh, speaker. Okay. I shall start now? Yes. Okay. Um, share my screen. Okay. So good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Macau and the University of Macau. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Anton Wardaya of Wardaya College for organizing this information seminar on the University of Macau, particularly the Faculty of Business Administration. I would also like to thank uh, Ivan, okay, of the, um, uh, Ivan Wu for organizing and helping helping us contact Dr. Wardaya and make the, making this um, webinar seminar possible. I am Dr. Joseph Sichanko, a member of the Faculty of Business Administration of the University of Macau, where I've been teaching for the last 31 years. I am passionate about international education, being in charge of, its international, of, of the Faculty of Business's International Exchange Program for 12 years during the 90s and early 2000s. Today, in this presentation, we will have the following program. So Dr. Anton Wardaya already made the introduction. And what I'll be doing will be introducing Macau and the University of Macau in general. So you get to know us a bit more. Followed by Professor Glenn McCartney, uh, who is our Associate Dean at the Faculty of Business Administration, who will be speaking more on the details regarding study at the Faculty of Business Administration. After, Dr., uh, after Professor Glenn McCartney, we will have Ms. Kieran Lay of the Global Affairs Office who will be speaking on uh, scholarships and also uh, how to uh, apply to the University of Macau for foreign students. And uh, our last two speakers are actually uh, present foreign students that we have at the university. The first one is uh, from Japan, okay, Ms. Awada Mizuki. And then our second one, uh, second speaker, uh, student speaker will be from Malaysia, Ms. Vanessa. And um, so let's start with the main presentation. So people will be asking, where is Macau, right? I mean, many of you might have been to Macau before or Hong Kong or China, but some of you may not have been. So Macau is actually at the Southern tip of mainland China, People's Republic of China. It is just uh, around 60 kilometers away from Hong Kong. Macau, um, well, <clears throat> like Hong Kong, who was, uh, which one, which was under the British rule, Macau was under Portuguese rule for many hundreds of years. And uh, last 1999, Macau was handed back uh, to China, to mainland China. So, Macau size presently is 44 square miles with 700, around 700,000 residents. But uh, you will be surprised that uh, we actually receive more than 30 million tourist visitor last year. So you will have an idea that Macau's main industry is the tourism or hospitality industry. 
<clears throat> like Hong Kong, Macau is a special administrative region of the People's Republic of China. Due to its very rich historical past, Macau is actually a place where East really meets the West. Okay? And this is something that's unique to Macau and something that is very good for your educational experience. It's a crossroads, crossroad between the East and the West. So to show you how this is a reality, I'll show you some, some features, some very um, you know, concrete features of how this happens. Well, we have still in Macau, uh, heritage buildings, okay, of the Portuguese era. We have this Lea, uh, Leal Senado Square, okay, or you have the uh, one of the oldest, if not the oldest lighthouse in this part of the world. Uh, and we have many of these other, uh, you know, examples of Western architecture uh, in, in Macau. And we also have uh, Chinese elements, like for example, this Chinese temple and so many other, other things. Um, but as you can see, as I mentioned, Macau's main industry is tourism. So we also are host to some of the best resorts in the world, okay? Like for example, the Parisian Macau. You don't have to go to, to Paris to see the Eiffel Tower, nor to go to, um, to Italy to see Venice because we have the Venetian Macau, okay? And um, what else? Besides that, Macau is a place for events and festivals. So the whole year round, you'll be uh, occupied with attending all of these things, depending on what is your interest. For example, we have the Macau, um, you know, this competition, a fireworks festival, which happens like for three weeks, participated by uh, countries from all over the world. And uh, just beside that is the Macau Tower, which is supposed to be the highest place for bungee jump in the world, okay? Then we also have, or, or, or you're famous for the Grand, Maca uh, the Grand Prix Macau. But besides that, we have the Macau uh, Film Festival, you know, concerts by the best, you know, uh, group singers in the world, pop and uh, classical ones. And we have the, Ma the Macau Marathon. And really, you know, in Macau, like, um, Every month there's a big event or several big events in a month. So you'll never get bored in Macau. And also one of the things that people ask will be dishes, food. Like if you are a student, you want to see, will I actually survive with good food in Macau? Yes, Macau is known for some of the best dishes in the world and in this region. For example, Hong Kong people normally come to Macau to eat. That's one of the main attractions we have in Macau. And uh, with Macau dishes or Macanese dishes, we have the, port the famous Portuguese egg tart, okay? And we have also Cantonese food and all dishes coming from mainland China. But besides that, we also have other dishes from all over the world. Being Ma Macau being an international city, we have Italian, American, whatever, okay? A French, um, you know, restaurants and some of the best really restaurants in the world. So for sure, you, you, uh, food, it will not be a problem for you. We have also a lot of, a number of Indonesian restaurants in Macau. So if you're gonna be missing Indonesian food, well, don't be afraid because we have a, quite a number of Indonesian, very good in, Indonesian restaurants in Macau. Now, part of the advantage of Macau is basically its location. It is just literally a stone's throw away from China. We walk to China, <laughs> we don't, you know, so, this is something that is um, a big advantage that we have. And this is the place where you have the most dynamic, you know, economy region in the world. So if you are really interested to know, understand how to do business in China, with China, then Macau will be a good platform for you to do that. You know, this is uh, uh, Guangzhou in Guangdong province, which is the province next just to Macau. Okay. And it is just an, maybe an hour away by train from Macau. Uh, we have this border, okay, one of the main borders that we have with mainland. And I said, literally, this is, uh, you know, you just walk through it and you're already in mainland China. And from the University of Macau, it's just, uh, I know, uh, 30 minutes away by bus from the University of Macau or even less. Then another important uh, factor for Macau is it's closest to Hong Kong. Macau uh, is just around 60 kilometers away from Hong Kong or, you know, every, uh, normal times you have a, a boat, 
that can bring you to Hong Kong in one hour. So if you want to go to Disneyland or shopping, then you know it's just so it's so easy. Okay. Uh, but of course, we know that Hong Kong is also financial, one of the you know the top financial centers in the world. No? So we're talking about business, you know, you'll be exposed to Hong Kong business, and that's also one of the good links that we have uh, if you actually study at the University of Macau. So now I welcome you to the University of Macau. Now we are ranked 301 to 250 uh, from the Times Higher Education of Best Universities in the World. We are the sixth most international university in the world. And in terms of the Faculty of Business Administration, we have the AICSB accreditation and the Equis accreditation for EMBA. Now what is AICSB? AICSB. Well, it's a, tra it's a mark that says that you're one of the best uh, business schools in the world. Okay, and there are only around, I don't know, like 2% of the world's business school having this accreditation. So for sure you have quality education. You're assured of quality education when you come to us. Now, this is the campus that we have of the university. It's, um, it's very new, okay? We have an older, uh, an old campus where we transferred from. And uh, so you can expect, um, you know, um, world-class facilities, very good facilities, and it's uh, two square kilometers in size. It's a beautiful place where you could actually be learning. And our students basically will be telling us about how their experience is right now at the university. So this is our university library. Uh, and one of the things that I think I would like to emphasize is the residential colleges, which is unique to us. We have Asia's uh, biggest residential college. And Rosetta College is not simply a dormitory. It's more than that. Okay, we have actually a master, you know, assistant, ma associate master, and other people who will be assisting you while you are staying with us at the university. So a lot of uh, formation that you'll be receiving will be also coming from the colleges. You'll never feel alone because you'll be with other students, and you have so many activities uh, of your interest, you know, throughout the whole semester, throughout the whole year. And one thing is that we actually blended all the best experiences of the best university residential colleges in the world. I, for one, 10 years ago, was able to visit uh, three top universities and look into their residential colleges. What, are, what were these colleges that I visited? The one from Cambridge, the one from Princeton, and the one from Yale. And I must say that uh, our college here would compare well with those colleges. Mm -hmm. And actually, as I said, we try to get the best practice from the best colleges around the world. And it's a feature of one of the colleges and this uh, sample room. So basically two students share a room. And in terms of sports and other extracurricular activities, we have the, one of the best in the world also. For example, we have this 50 meter covered swimming pool. So the whole throughout the year, all throughout the year, you can swim, whether it's cold weather, it's hot weather, okay? And you don't fear of losing, of getting dark <laughs> one thing here, right? So, because it's covered swimming pool. And we have nice football field, nice stadium, track field. We have uh, you know, indoor basketball courts, air conditioned, you know, several courts, outdoor courts, we have a gym, we have all the other sports that you will be interested of in doing, archery, what have you. And as I said, also, we have a lot of extracurricular activities that students can apply and be part of clubs. Now, the University of Macau, as I mentioned earlier, is a sixth in the ranking of the world's most international university. So here is the ranking. You can look at it from the internet, from, you know, and we're actually number six, okay? So we have a big, a sizable number of foreign students studying with us, okay? And not only students, but also in terms of faculty. Like I myself, actually, I'm originally from the Philippines. And uh, Professor Glenn is from Ireland, right? If I'm incorrect. And uh, so we have many of our faculty members uh, from, from foreign countries. So that will also add to your experience, okay? Enrich your experience. Now, I basically uh, also add this one. Uh, which is a quotation from one of our former students. Actually, she was my student before. Her name was, uh, her name is Marie Roselle. Okay, and let's read what she said. A Japanese student soon to start working for Google Japan shares her experience of studying 
global business at the, one of the world's most international universities, University of Macau, China. So it is by Marie Roselle. I'm Marie Roselle, a year four foreign student from Faculty of Business Administration, specializing in brand management. I'm half Japanese, half Canadian, and grew up in Tokyo, Japan. I'll start my full-time job in sales at Google Japan in the forthcoming October after my graduation. The reason I chose the University of Macau is that as a student who is pursuing a career in business, it is crucial for me to understand how to conduct business properly on a global scale. So I wanted to expose myself to a different culture to enhance my knowledge in international business. I chose the University of Macau because it is a vibrant and young university no, known for its geographic advantage where we can best look at the gem of cultural legacies after two civilizations encountered each other over the course of 500 years. I'm not only given opportunities to meet great people with a cross-cultural background, but I also know more of Macanese as well as Chinese business etiquettes and mentality, which would be very beneficial in terms of marketing strategy references. So lastly, I summarize what I've talked so far. First, why would you be deciding to come and joining us in the university? First, you are assured of a high quality education. We're one of the best universities in the world. Second, a world-class campus. Our facilities are world-class. Third, a very international environment in terms of students and in terms of professors. And also, number four, lots of opportunities for international exchange, okay? We give you really a lot of opportunities to study in the US, in Canada, in Europe, around Asia. So it's just up to you to grab it, okay? And then number five, located in the most promising region in the world, to build strong network with mainland Chinese people, among others. Of course, you also build your network with our, you know, our European students, our other Asian students, so on and so forth, right? But again, being in this region, uh, you'll be able to build that and also learn. I um, forgot to learn Mandarin if you want, okay? To learn Cantonese will be a very good place for you to do so. Number six, English is the medium for instruction, okay? So, um, so you don't be afraid because English is the main medium of instruction in our classes. And lastly, Macau is a very safe, convenient, lively, friendly, dynamic, an international city. So uh, I think with all this, uh, there's more than reason enough for you, you know, why you should try to consider uh, coming and investing your time and education with us. Thank you uh, very much. And now I would like to um, uh, basically call on Professor Glenn McCartney to speak on the Faculty of Business Administration. Thank you, Joseph. Um, well, it's very difficult to follow after that presentation with Joseph is so, uh, so wonderful. Um, behind me is the uh, Kotai strip. In fact, I am not sitting there. I'm, I'm sitting in my, my office. But behind me is a picture of the Kotai strip. And behind my head is the Sheraton. It's the biggest Sheraton in the world. It's 4,000 rooms. So, and, and right now they're doing a renovation, over 2 billion US dollar renovation to make a theme Londoner project. So when uh, Joseph was talking about Venice and Paris, we're going to have London here too very soon, <laughs> right behind my head is this big renovation. These are called integrated resorts. These are massive, some of the largest hospitality buildings in the world, right behind my head. Now, most of our students will be employed within these, 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 these integrated resorts. Um, that doesn't mean hospitality. I'm a professor of hospitality and tourism and casino management. That's my area, integrated resorts. But they will join like back a house. They'll become legal teams, the audit teams. So there's a, basically every student coming out of a university can almost get a job in an integrated resort. They have to hire so many people. So we look at what our students want at the very end. They want really good jobs, don't they? So that's very important for us is where, where the students want to go. 
Joseph is right. I am actually from Northern Ireland. And um, the today is Halloween. And if you look up the history of Halloween, it's an Irish Celtic festival. So I'm celebrating my traditional festival today. Although after 4,000 years, it has changed quite a bit. So we have a lot of Halloween festivals in Macau today. But I, I was looking at one last night. I teach event management and I say how festivals has changed. But we, 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 we are celebrating, we're an international city. So there's lots of Halloween festivals today in Macau. Um, I'm gonna share a, a, a PowerPoint for you guys now. Um, basically talk about what FBA, I'm Associate Dean of uh, Teaching and Learning, which means I oversee curriculum development and make sure that you have students have a great classroom experience. And as I said before, things like internships and making sure at the very end, you have a great career prospects ahead of you. That's very important. I spend a lot of time from industry. I am from industry. So I work a lot with the industry. I still consult with the industry. And so that industry connection is very important for us also, working with the community and society is very, very important for us too. So you're going to have all of these, these uh, um, opportunities if you come to study at the University of Macau. And I know you have lots of choices right now in determining where you want to go. So I hope you, you will have a think about us. Now, what I'm going to have, a, I'm going to attempt to share my PowerPoint. Um, Joseph, can you see that one okay? Yes, yes, we could. Oh, good. All right. Now, um, the Faculty of Business Administration. So you can read a lot of this on the, uh, the, the website. So I'm not going to go through a lot of it uh, in detail, but we, we are very outward thinking. We're like, we want to be, as, as um, Joseph said, we want to be a leading in the region in, in terms of we are a full like, business school. So we have not just my area of tourism and hospitality, um, but we also have areas of finance, accounts, and many other business subjects. So for us, we have nearly 3,000 students. After I finish this Zoom, I'm going into my master's class. I have 41 students in my master's class, and at least six or seven are for international students from all over the world, from Japan, from Russia, Belarus, from, from Cyprus, from Philippines, and so forth. All of my class this afternoon. So we have a very international outward thinking. So you will not be alone in Macau. You will have lots of other students from all over the world. We have four departments, Integrated Resort and Tourism Management, which I teach, but I also oversee the departments of accounting, finance, management and marketing. So we have a broad offering of finance uh, business subjects. If you are, of course, at FBA, you, if you are focusing on finance, you'll also get an opportunity to have a look at what we're doing in integrated resorts. So you can, you can also see, for example, we have research centers as well, in which uh, us as faculty, we do a lot of research in industry. It's very important for us. So, for example, three, about in three weeks ago, we, Macau reopened its borders to all of China. And as Joseph said, we rely on China a lot, 30 million tourists last year. So in September, we welcome back 400,000 Chinese back to Macau. It's very important for us to study how to tourism recovery for Macau. So that's part of our research agenda. So, so far we are, we are looking at a tourism recovery for Macau because it's a very important part of Macau's economy. So we have these programs, we have the BBA, we have the BSc in accounting, and just recently, very important business intelligence and data analytics. We all, understand, we all understand these trends about AI, big data, internet of things and so forth and cloud technology. So we are really trying to get ahead of the trends and understanding that we need to make sure students are equipped for the future. So we are doing, we're making sure that our courses are constantly, every year we're looking at our course outlines and making sure we're trying to stay ahead of new trends. What are the unique advantages? You can see Joseph has already told you many of our unique advantages. But one of, our, one of our focuses is on student quality, which means we will make sure, we will try to make sure that you have a great student experience in the classroom and mentoring. And we have many ways to, to so make sure the students can excel. As I mentioned before, we have the traditional side. You obviously, I mean, I studied accountancy and finance. These are very important for you, accountancy and finance and business subjects. 
Um, so these are foundational courses, courses in ethics. These are very important for us. So we have these foundational courses. And as I mentioned before, we have also new courses like uh, big data and so forth. And of course, we are the own, we were the first in the world to have a master's and a bachelor's international integrated resort management. Integrated resorts, you probably know from Las Vegas. You've probably seen them in Singapore. Singapore have two, the iconic Marina Bay Sands, for example. Those are called integrated resorts. Macau has some of the largest integrated resorts in the world. And they therefore, we started a program around it. We were the first in the world to have an integrated resort uh, program. Um, and as Joseph said, we are, we are accredited by the top, uh, top accreditation bodies in the world, AACSB and AMBER, which means later on, some of you may want to study an MBA. We also have a EMBA program um, and a DBA program. But important for us is accreditation because those systems and policies and competencies are things that we like to, we like to uh, follow. So it's very important for us. Our tourism and hospitality is ranked 42 in the world in the Shanghai Ranking Index. Um, so we heard about these rankings and they're so important because they reflect on the quality of our programs. Mm -hmm. if, you study, if you study in the area of accountancy, you're gonna get maximum course exemptions for your professional qualifications. That's very important for people who want to become professional accountants, uh, that after graduation, you have the maximum course exemptions. We have exchange partnerships. So. Yesterday, I'm looking at uh, we, our exchange programs and seeing our students. Obviously, with COVID-19, we were restricted uh, last semester, but we hopefully as next year, we can, we, we can slowly return to exchange partnerships. But our students love to go overseas to many countries. Uh, that means if you want to study some topics in another university and come back, you can get exemptions. And we encourage that because that is global thinking. We have business engagement. It's a very important part of me. I am from business. It's a very important part that our students can, can get jobs, internships. And even last week, I had senior executives come into my classroom to talk to the students. So it's very important that you have that connection to business um, so you understand the real world. As you can say, most of, well, nearly all of our students get jobs. That's so important. The few, the ones that are not getting employed are going on to do PhDs or, 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 not, or, or further studies. So that's very important for us too, that, um, that we, almost, we get, most of our students can get a job at the very end. Many, many top companies employ our, our students, as you can see, some of those you will know yourself. Some of them are from Macau because they're integrated resorts like Sands China and Wynn and SJM and Galaxy and MGM. Those are all Macau based, but they're also international brands. I'm sure you know MGM. But then you'll see the big accountancy companies like Deloitte and KPMG and so forth. And of course, you know Alibaba. So these are many of our, our, our where our graduates will go. Um, some will, as I mentioned before, will become postgraduates. They'll go on to do uh, PhDs. And so you can see other universities throughout the world that have a PhD. My PhD is from the UK. Um, I studied in Surrey. So again, many of our faculty have studied overseas and got our doctorate degrees. And we continue to, to do joint exchange, even our own research with universities in the UK, for example, and so forth. Um, very interesting is our labs. Um, we have a currency museum, but if you, we have a, a trading room from Thomson's Reuters, and we have a accountancy information management lab and survey lab and uh, we also have again very interesting a mock casino and a mock hotel and a hospitality lab and a mice lab that comes under my area of, of tourism and why, why you say we have a we have a casino floor uh, in in our faculty building well we can study we can study behavior we can study um, many things about marketing of casinos but if you have these laboratories you're able to study and understand the practice of many of these industries in a safe environment. Because if you make a mistake, you're only in a, you're only in a lab and you can retry it and retry it. So the labs are really important for students to go in and, and try to understand the real world, but you can make a mistake and learn from that. And so you can use, we, we use these labs a lot. And that's all what I want to present today. 
Um, and I believe, yes, we're just trying to keep ahead of time, ahead on time. And I, at the very end, we'll have some Q&A and I, I hope I can answer some of your questions by then. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Glenn, for that very uh, interesting and uh, you know, very informative in, uh, presentation on the, on the faculty of business. I guess students will be now more eager to, to consider us after your presentation. So now we'll have the, Ms. Kiran Lay from the Global Affairs Office of the University of Macau. Kiran, please. Hi. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Kiran from the Global Affairs of the University of Macau. So today I'll give you some information about the internationalization of the university, exchange and study abroad opportunities. And I will also uh, show you the list of our bachelor's program, uh, the admission requirements, fees, and also the scholarships for the international students. So I'll share the screen to you first. Just give me a second. Um, okay. So can you see it? No, I'm it's not okay. No. Can't you? It's okay? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Yeah, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, yes. good. So, okay, let's start with the internationalization uh, in UM. So uh, the university's main medium of instruction is English and over 80% of the UM faculty members are from outside Macau. And uh, we have also established collaboration agreements with more than 230 institutions of high learning in over 32 countries and regions. And we are ranked number nine in 2020 times uh, high education world ranking, but now we are ranked number six in international outlook in the 2021 ranking. Um, furthermore, we have a number of internationally accredited programs like the ACCA, uh, Hong Kong IE, CFA, etc. Okay, so uh, the university encourages the students to go abroad, which helps students to develop a global perspective and by, expose, expose, by exposing them to different cultures as well as broaden their horizons and knowledge. So for this purpose, we have a, we offer a variety of student exchange programs. We have uh, signed exchange agreements with 150 global partners in 28 countries. And so students can apply to participate in our partner institutions for one semester or one academic year. And uh, like these universities, uh, you can go to universities like in China, we have, we are partners with uh, Tsinghua University, uh, Zhejiang University, in Japan, we have uh, Waseda University, and, you, and in Europe, we have University of Vienna, Southern Denmark, University of Flor Florence, and uh, University of Lisbon, University of Porto, and in Brazil, we have University of São Paulo. In the US, we have uh, Stony Brook University, uh, Temple University, etc. So you can find the full list uh, in our Global Affairs website. And uh, the university also provides short study abroad opportunities, uh, uh, mainly during the summer. And we have over 80 programs in uh, 24 countries. So this is, uh, let me show you the programs for the undergraduate students. Uh, UM has seven faculties and five institutes, offers high quality academic programs at undergraduate levels that covers a variety of fields, including literature, language, business, administration, marketing, accounting, international integrated resort management, education, Biomedical sciences, law, history, psychology, sociology, communication, engineering, computer science, etc. And we are often asked by the students, uh, what are our popular programs? So I have highlighted some of our hot and signature programs with the star, so that, like, uh, for your reference. And okay, now comes to the admission requirement for undergraduate programs. Uh, international students with the following. Uh, with the, any of the qualification listed may apply may apply for the bachelor's program by direct admission. So this uh, admission requirement on this slide is from the registry's website. For Indonesia, uh, we will let, look at your SMA, UGEN, Sekola, and 
an SMA Eugen National Resort. Sorry if I pronounce it wrongly. And so if but if you have other qualifications like A level, IT, SAT, etc., we will also consider. And uh, the above admission requirement is extracted from the admission from our admission rules. So please refer to the uh, registry re website for the detailed admission requirement and application procedures. The application period, okay, starts from the first of December two thousand and twenty till April sixteenth two thousand and twenty one. Online application will be available during the application period and an interview may be required for admission selection of the undergraduate programs. Okay, fees. Uh, the tuition fee for the four year bachelor's program is around 381,000 Macau dollars. And for a five year program, it will be around uh, 476,000 Macau dollars. And for the dormitory fee, uh, this is the fee for the academic year 2020-2021. And, and okay, now for the dormitory fee, it will be around uh, 24,000 Macau dollars per year. Uh, students will be staying in a shared room in the residential college. And this fee includes 15 meals per week in the residential college. Okay, now comes to the most attractive part of my presentation, and that is the International Student Scholarship. If you are an international student applying for the full-time bachelor's program who meet the admission requirement of the respective degree program, you are automatically considered for the International Student Scholarship. So you don't, you, you, you do, you don't need to apply it separately. Uh, the University of Macau Review review all the international students' application and award scholarship to those who have demonstrated excellence in their academic performances. Successful international students will receive the tuition fee waiver and residential college fee waiver for 10 months per academic year. And the scholarship is provided for a maximum term of four academic years for bachelor's awardees. But if your program is a five-year program, we will offer it for five years. And the students, are required to meet certain criteria for the continuation of the scholarship each year. So uh, for the details, please visit our Global Affairs website. And um, okay, here comes to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kiran, for that. I think uh, that really provided uh, an, a good idea of on, on the students regarding you know, uh, international exchange at the same time, the scholarships that uh, they could actually uh, be, you know, uh, be able to get if they applied with us. Okay, thank you. And now let's have our two students. And uh, to first, we'll have first uh, Ms. Mizuki Zawada from Japan, who will be speaking on her experience with us. Uh, Mizuki, please. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mizuki from Japan and I'm currently in the third grade major in marketing. And uh, let me share my screen with you. Can you see it? Okay, perfect. Okay then, um, okay, so today I would like to share my campus life experience at UMAC with you. And I will introduce about these academic and residential college and what I do with my friends, specifically in the campus. And first, how, like, how is it like to study in UMAC for me? Um, right now, it's due to this pandemic, I'm staying in Japan and taking hybrid classes and I'm taking all classes through Zoom. And I've been doing all those presentation and taking those exams online as well. And, but um, when we are not in pandemic, um, we take all courses, uh, I take all course, courses in English. So I don't find any difficulties for language issue in all of the courses. But um, what I found a difficult at when I, enrolled into UMAC in the beginning of the year was um, especially for the group present presentation because 
every most of the students were from China and I I didn't know anyone back then so I was very nervous if I could get along but turned out everyone everyone was really sweet and everyone was so nice so I could get along very easily and they tried to help me out for so many things and also for the group group presentation and not only for that but also a course materials as well so yeah um yeah what i can say is that everyone in here are very nice and very friendly and they are willing to help you in so many ways not only about the studies and that's for study in the umac and for next about a residential college the rc um this is where most of the students spend their time throughout the campus life include myself um, unfortunately, I'm not in there now, but um, it's in the campus, so like you will never get late for the classes because it, it literally like only takes like max for 10 minutes and you can get enough of sleep. And so, so therefore, like you, you will never get like pressurized because of the time management. <laughs> so you can really relax and you can. Yeah, you won't have any pressure for the time management, I would say. And also, um, if you like, um, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, also, I feel like, like taking a nap when you have time in between classes, then you can always go back to your room and take a nap and feel less pressure. And it doesn't like sound as exciting as it is, but it's, I feel like it's really important in those busy campus life. So yeah. And anyway, um, I would say this is the first place where you can meet all those brand new friends in the university or even in Macau. And because I moved into Macau since in I enrolled into UMAC. So back then I did not know anyone, but we have like around 10 RCs and then we have, each of them have a lot of activities that where you can meet so many new people. And so, yeah, that's how I made my new friends at university and it really helped me out. And those are some of my friends that I made at RC in this slide. And they are still my, one of my closest friends in the campus. And they they have been helping out for so many things, for about the courses and also about a life in Macau in general. So it's really great to spend your time a lot, most of the time, in the campus and get along with those local people in our cities. And lastly, at the some free times in the specifically in the campus so we have a lot of like cafes restaurants and also we have this huge library where you can find your own places easily and so me and my friends often go to this library and study before the exam or a group presentation because it's really huge and we we can get a enough of spaces easily and also um not only for study but also um we can also watch some movies in some quiet spaces and we can get we can get chill with my friends in free time and also not only library but also like those cafes oh sorry cafes and restaurants where you can test, like we can, you can enjoy so many foods from different countries. So it's really lovely places and we've got really beautiful landscapes, which I really love. So yeah, that's it for my, for myself. Thank you for listening. Okay, hey, thank you very much, uh, Mizuki, that uh, provided, uh, you know, uh, good idea coming from a student of what the University of Macau is. Okay. Uh, next, last of our speaker 
is Miss Vanessa Yik from Malaysia. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So hello everyone, I'm Vanessa from Malaysia and currently I'm a year four student who majoring in global business management. And I would like to share my screen to talk about my life in UMAC. Can you see it? Yes. yes. Okay. So how about now? Everything's fine, right? So. Yeah. For the, five, uh, for the next five minutes, I would like to share about the attractions and reasons that I chose UMAC and also the experience of mine as a UM student. So first of all, let's talk about the attractions of Macau. As what uh, Professor Joseph said, Macau is actually as a special administrative region. Macau has a lot of uh, historical heritage. And within the 400 years of the colony by the Portuguese, Macau is a city that shaped with unique uh, cultures that is Midwest. And secondly, is the lifestyle and also government's policy in Macau. And uh, no matter the time in the daytime or the nighttime, Macau is filled with a lot of assignments, which I never bought of. And Macau governments actually encourage a lot, a lot of uh, foreign students to study in Macau. And they even have a lot of scholarship quotas for us to apply. And then it's the culture and diversity in Macau. Macau, as what we mentioned, is filled with the culture that um, is the mix of Chinese and Portuguese. You can see over here, there is no more to see bilingual uh, read sign as Chinese and Portuguese mix in Macau. And that is also Macau is one of the last countries that have bilingual as their official language. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of African students and Portuguese speakers came to Macau for higher educations. And then let's talk about the attractions of UMAC. First of all is the um, English education system in UMAC, which all most of the programs all of the program is conducted in the medium of English and only accept, <clears throat> only accept the language programs for students who study Chi who study Chinese or law in Portuguese and further on. And also the lovely environment of UMAC. Like what Professor Joseph mentions, UM actually has the uh, campus environment, which I long for. And it is quite for me hard for me to find it in Malaysia, especially in the city area or in the Kuala Lumpur area. And lastly is the opportunity in UMAC. Um, when I was choosing university, I care about the financial supports offered by the university, in which UM actually has a lot of financial supports for students, which uh, uh, Ms. Kira just now say mentions. And they even have a lot of uh, training programs and also exchange program for us to broaden our horizons to meet more people, to meet more foreign students, and also to step outside Macau to learn more. And after all, let's talk about my experience inside UM. So uh, I attend a lot of activities in UMAC, and first of all is the HA activities. Um, the HA is actually stand for the house assistance, in which is more likely like a student association in our residential college. And during my year two, I participated as a group leader of arts and culture departments where us HA will have a lot, organize a lot of events for the students and the residential college students. For example, we have the barbecue party before the final exam to boost up our spirits for our exam. And also we have uh, the Chinese New Year Fun Fair. We have the Halloween party and the Halloween makeup also. And secondly, as a Malaysian, I got to know more Malaysians in UMAC too. <clears throat> we often have Malaysian gatherings and attend the international student affairs activities uh, where we have the barbecue party to celebrate Mooncake festivals. We even have the picnic day in our campus and we attend the ISA, which is the international students affairs activities. Um, for example, the food festivals, which we 
has won <laughs> with Malaysian Sports and also the International Night to learn to meet other students from other countries. And also I got a chance to attend a lot of real ceremonies and also conference to know what really happens in the real business world. And this is the conference for the Japanese company to learn about the, gum, uh, the gaming industry in Macau and also the ceremony for the responsible gaming sympathy. And next, let's talk about my experience outside UM that UM offered me. First of all is the community service, which um, in my residential college, we go, we have a program that we can um, offer teaching chances in Malacca, which is in Malaysia, in the Libyo Center. It's more likely like an orphanage, um, orphanage house, and we offer them knowledge outside of what they can learn from the textbooks with a fun and also happy atmosphere for them to learn language and also knowledge. And then it's the exchange programs that we can go to Taiwan to see, meet people and students from the National Cheng Chi University, where they also come to Macau to visit Macau to know what actually happens in Macau. And we even uh, walk around Taipei and we learn about the tea culture in Taiwan and so on. And most importantly, like what Miss Kieran said, I participate in the exchange programs to Linus University in Sweden, which I got a chance to explore Sweden, uh, to visit Stockholm, to see the snow, to enjoy the snow, to meet new people, and also those outdoor activities that I can never experience in Malaysia. So to sum up now, uh, and then we go to the IKEA trip to, to see the first IKEA in the world in Sweden. And also we go to Finland to see the Northern Lights and also to experience what uh, her ski rides really are. So to sum up, I would like to share quotes by Abraham Lincoln, which the best way to predict our future is to create it. And hopefully you guys can create your future with UM, which is, has a lot of opportunity for you. And that's it, thank you. Thank you very much, Vanessa, for sharing us really your rich experience. You know, mm -hmm. how I wish I also had that experience that you had with us at the university, okay? So also thank you for Mizuki, okay? And, um, and uh, Dr. Wandaya, or Daya, then, do we have, if do we have questions, we, we are ready to, to answer them. Or? Okay, uh, thank you so much for all speakers. And there, there is the, there are question here from Pahadi. We have, in Indonesia, we have no na national exam anymore. Do you still require it? Do you have any monthly uh, stipend in your scholarship? Okay, I think uh, uh, I'll answer the question. So uh, actually from the registry's information, we need the students to have the national exam plus the high school certificate in order to consider uh, uh, for the admission. But actually uh, we also accept uh, qualif uh, other qualifications uh, that uh, uh, qualifications, qualifications that are acceptable for admission to bachelor's program in higher education institution outside Macau, we, we were also considered. And also if the student got uh, other offers by the university, if you can prove that to us, we will also consider it. So actually you can just send us the information and we will review it and, and, and consider the application. And uh, for the, let me see. Uh, Stipend. Stipend, okay. For the monthly stipend. So for the uh, international student scholarship, the monthly stipend is not included, but we have many other opportunities for the students to, to learn and get some money for their living. Like we have the student trainee trainees program. So uh, the students can apply in, uh, in the faculty or other departments uh, in our university as a student trainee and they can uh, 
uh, earn some money for themselves. And also some professors will also offer studentships for the students. So it really depends on, on, on the professors and, and whether the students can get an offer from the departments or the faculties. Okay, uh, thank you so much for the explanation. And then uh, the other question again, what is the minimum requirement for TOEFL score or IELTS score if we want to apply it? Let me see. So we have the English requirement uh, with the TOEFL uh, paper-based test, a minimum score of 550 or the internet-based test with a minimum score of 79 and the IELTS uh, with band 6.0 or above. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then... Uh... Another question, it is uh, available for Olympiad certificate to apply and it is like uh, directly can enter it or or something else. Can, can, could you please repeat the question? Um, maybe it is like the special pathway for Olympiad uh, winners, right? Uh, like Olympiad, math Olympiad. And yeah, all math Olympiad or physics or, or chemistry, computer science, Olympiad winners. And okay. is there like a special pathway to enter Macau University? Oh, okay. So I think uh, with this uh, uh, special awards, I think the faculty will, will specially consider when they uh, see this uh, uh application and and actually the the application procedure they just need to go through the normal application procedure and when the faculty member because the students will be in interviewed by the faculties and so if they see this awards those awards they will uh may have special consideration on that and actually it really depends on which faculty uh he is or he or she a student is applied for is applying for. Okay, uh, this is like uh, the question from the student, maybe like who already study in diploma three. Is there available for diploma three to uh, to go to the bachelor degree in Macau University? And is there an available scholarship for it? Diploma, diploma to diploma. bachelor. Already has a diploma. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, actually, uh, associate degree, high diploma, or bachelor's degree, degree ho program holder can also apply for the undergraduate program or master program. If yeah, and actually, it's the same. It's the same procedure. Okay. And maybe like uh, this is the question again. What percentage a student can get the scholarship here? Oh, oh, it, re uh, it really depends on the, uh, uh, the number of students who are applying each year. And actually our scholarship uh, was established like in 2019. And uh, it's just the second, uh, the second year, the third year, yeah, two years. Only. And so uh, we are still um, promoting it to different uh, students, different countries. And so uh, I think that if you, if you perform academically well, I think the chance is high. And also we will also consider uh, the nationalities of the students when we are offering the scholarship. So we will be very, uh, we would like to make it a very diversified, uh, to offer it diversity. Um, in a more diversified way. So uh, academically and uh, nationality, uh, all these we were considered. Okay, another question again. Uh, is there a registration fee if we want to apply Macau University? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. There is, a, the, uh, let me see the fees, 300 if I'm correct. Yeah, the application fee when we uh, to apply 
uh, do the online registration is 300 Macau dollars. Okay. And then another question again. Uh, it is possible for vocational school to apply uh, Macau University vocational uh, mm -hmm. engineering specialization. Mm -hmm. uh, Macau University. We we actually we will the most uh, um, we we will also consider, but we will be more focused on looking at the national exam result, high school certificate and and an associate degree or higher diplomas. Okay, I think there is no question again. Yeah, maybe I think uh, you, you must repeat again. If, if uh, the students want to apply Mako University, how, uh, well, what website they, they must go to? Yeah. Oh, uh, I think they uh, you can like first log into the University of Macau website, which is www.um.edu.mo. And then uh, for undergraduate uh, students, for bachelor's degree, you can uh, go to the registries website. And then in the website, they have all the information about the application procedures, uh, the dates, application dates, and also they will also have links uh, about uh, uh, scholarships and uh, programs, etc. Yeah, and the registration deadline too, yeah? Okay. Like, is there like early and main round two a, registration? A, a, sorry, sorry? Early or main round or late round? Is there um, early, 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 oh, round. early, early oh. main round or late round? A uh, registration. registration, application, application, application starts from the uh, December the first. December until only one period, right? Yeah. So only period. one period. Okay. Okay. I think. Um, Okay, um, is there any, uh, maybe uh, for closing statement, maybe from uh, Macau University, University of Macau can give this a uh, closing statement. Thank you Len, so much. Would you like to give a closing statement? Len? Um, I, I, I don't want to take any more of your time, but I li I'd like to thank all the panel here today for, 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 for all the wonderful presentations. I'm sorry my presentation was so poor in, in, in comparison to all your wonderful presentations, but I hope that all, and I thank all the students who came online and spent their morning with us, and I hope that they, they will really consider University of Macau as an option for their future, as I say, career development. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you to Macau uh, uh, next year. Yes, of course, we look forward to welcoming you here. And uh, as Joseph said, and the uh, students said, all the wonderful food and all the other rich offerings we have here. So thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you for, for the audience in YouTube Live, yeah? I see for the audience, yeah. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank Professor, you. Professor, you. Professor Glenn, Miss Kiran, Miss Vanessa, and Miss Thank Mr. you so Kiki. much. Okay. Thank you so and much. Mr. Ivan, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye.